Hey guys, it's A Paul, and yes, we are doing another audio recording only just because I want to be honest, I'm exhausted. The start of school is kicking my ass. So, this will be my last audio recording for a while, so don't you fear, I will be back in front of the camera soon. But it was either just do an audio recording this time, or literally not have a video at all, because mama's tired. Alright, so this is the last talking CJ. The next few videos will be going into Crimetober. I have an update on one of the cases we covered last time, and actually, I I have a video that I'm going to be re-uploading because YouTube did not like it last year and completely removed the video from my channel. So I did a little editing and took out the parts that YouTube said they didn't like and am trying to upload it again and hope to God I don't get a strike. But the last talking CJ we will be doing is jury selection. So what's the reason for having a jury? Actually, Actually, the right to a trial by jury is guaranteed by the Sixth Amendment. So it actually is a constitutional right. And honestly, it is one of the most important civic duties that we have as citizens. Without this, we would not be able to be judged by jury of our peers, which is really important. It is a major aspect of our democracy. And honestly, people just take it seriously. I know it's not everybody's thing but just do it. You can be a jury for two different types of cases, for civil cases and criminal cases. I have done a video on that and I'll have somewhere on the screen you can click for that video. And contrary to popular belief, you do not have to have previous knowledge of court proceedings to serve. It's actually better if you don't because then it is a true jury of your peers. And usually the judge is the one that lets you know everything you need to to know when it comes to the court proceedings to be a juror. They really talk you through it and they help you. It's not a big deal. All that is truly expected of you is to be open-minded and unbiased. You need to listen to both sides equally and give them both just as much thought. So what exactly qualifies you to serve on a jury? For this country, you must be a U.S. citizen, 18 to 70 years old. You need to be pretty fluent in English or you have to be able to be fluent in American. American Sign Language. You need to live in the court's jurisdiction of wherever you're being called to jury for. You have the right to vote, must be able to physically sit and hear the entire trial, and you must be able to comprehend the trial testimony also. And you cannot be excused from jury duty for your sex or your race. And if you fit this criteria, your name will be chosen from a master list of registered voters and licensed drivers. It's completely random. I'm sure it's just computerized now, but just randomly choose. And for jurors that will be serving on a possible death penalty case, the jurors might need to be death qualified. And what I mean by that is no member of the jury can believe that the death penalty should not exist. Everyone on the jury will believe or at least be indifferent to the death penalty. And this is to solidify that people are choosing to not give the person the death penalty, not because of moral values, but because they truly just don't believe this person does deserves the death penalty. All right, and then we're going to go over the jury process or what's known as the voir dire. This is Latin for to speak the truth. And there's about 40 people that consist of a panel of possible jurors, but they try to cut it down to 12. The panel members are sworn in for questioning and it starts with a short description of the case. And the first step is you fill out a short questionnaire. It's given by the judge sometimes by the counsel, but mostly the judge. And what's being asked is pretty much like validation of your identity, your name, address, voters registration, and employment. And this is when they choose 30 potential jurors and 10 alternates. The 10 alternates are in case a juror would like get sick or have an emergency during trial. We take one of these alternates to set in. They don't help make any decisions really, unless they're like officially sworn in into the 
jury, like that jury member's not coming back. And the second step is that a judge leads jury interviews. The judge will ask about 30 questions. If you've ever been convicted, do you have relatives or family involved in this case, or like close friends, your neighbor, that kind of stuff. And if there's a bias and why. There's actual bias, and that's when like a juror admits they wouldn't be able to not think one way. But then there's also implied bias, which means that a juror has reasons that could make a biased choice regardless of really what they're thinking or saying. And that could be like your character traits, your personal experiences, maybe a type of individuals you work with at work. It's just things like that can't be part of the jury because you want it to be about the case and true feelings about the case and not anything that could sway you one way or another. Especially when we're talking about justice for others, such as like murder and things like that. So any juror that has a bias is removed. And then the third step is that both sides get to ask questions. They ask about biases again, things they might already know about the case, maybe if they've seen it on the news or on social media, that type of thing. And that also they ask them about their personal beliefs and what their strong opinions are. They cannot ask overly personal questions though or hint to where they want the case to go. They have to stay pretty neutral when asking anything. Then there's veneer. At this point, the lawyers start picking which jurors they don't want on the jury by challenges. There's a few different type of of challenges. There's challenges for cause and these are made during the jury process that reveals that jurors are not qualified, able, or fit to serve in a particular case. Lawyers usually have as many for cause challenges as they need to remove any jurors they don't like. And then there's peremptory challenges and you can use these for literally no reason at all if you wanted to excuse a juror. And these are mostly because because they just seem to favor the other side a little too much for their liking. And like I said, there is absolutely no limit of challenges for cause that either side can call. But before the case, they do make, and before the jury selection, but for peremptory challenges, each side sits down and determines a number of these that they want before the jury selection even happens. And when you use a challenge to remove of a juror, it's called striking the jury. And for some reason, if you're wanting to get out of jury duty, which I highly discourage, because like I said at the beginning of this video, it is your right and your civic duty. Be memorable. Most lawyers on either side of the jury usually will strike you if you're too memorable. They want normal, plain, Jane people kind of seem to be middle down the road. No one that would seem to sway on either side and definitely not big personalities. And once the jury is selected, you do select a four person. This is by a judge or the jury selects them and they are just used to handle arguments, make sure everyone has a fair voice and talk to the judge about what the jurors need to make a decision at the end of the case. The jurors that have been chosen will be sworn in by the clerk who administers the oath. During the trial, the jury responsibility is to listen to both sides unbiasedly like I said earlier. You want to listen to the opening statements by both parties, listen to all the testimony of witnesses, look over your evidence given to you, and look over those closing arguments. That is a big summary for everything they wanted to prove in this case. And during the trial, the juror cannot speak about this case or look up new information go anywhere other than the court. You can't be watching the news. You can't be on social media. You can't do any of that. And at the end of the trial, the judge will provide the jury with instructions and the final verdict is found. If the jury can't agree, they do declare a mistrial and a new trial may take place. But usually a jury will come to the conclusion of held liable or not held liable, not guilty, guilty, that type of thing. 
And at this point, the judge might tell you you're allowed to speak out, but there are some cases that you will be sworn to secrecy until your last day. And I know it will be asked, so I'm going to go ahead and cover it. You cannot get out of jury duty because they will not let you off work. Most states, and especially if you're in West Virginia like me, the law requires for them to let you off work. Now, they don't require your business to pay you for those days off work, but the court does try to release you as soon as possible. But yeah, so that is all I have for jury selection. Thank you guys so much for, well, not watching, more listening probably. Please leave below any thoughts or comments you have about jury selection. Have you ever been on a jury? And please leave below if you have any other ideas for talking CJs. Please like and subscribe for me and hit that notification button. That way you're notified the next time I upload. Also, there is a GoFundMe in the description box below for Crystal Young. Definitely go watch her video if you haven't to find out why her mom needs this PI so badly that has reached out to her. And also, I still have stickers that are being sold on a website that will be in the description box below. All proceeds go to the Cold Case Foundation, so it's for a good cause. And thank you guys so much for watching slash listening today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!